if you like authentic tag team wrestling, then you probably like the revival slash the revolt slash whatever they call it now. The artists, formerly known as Dash Wilder and Scott Dawson, now Cash Wheeler and Dax Howard, sat down with Chris Jericho for his Talk Is Jericho podcast this week. Anyone hoping for a glimpse into what the future holds for the rebranded duo was teased beyond belief throughout. The Revolt are keeping their plans close to their vest, which is perhaps understandable given the current climate. In all honesty though, these lads are in no real rush to decide where they're going to end up next. Despite refusing to speak too much about which company they're going to end up signing for, the Revolt did actually come across quite well on this Jericho pod. They're humble, they're hungry, and they're totally unwilling to throw WWE as a whole under the bus. But they did go into detail about ludicrous meetings with Vince McMahon, how much money they were offered to stay, and so, so much more. I'm Gareth from What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 things we learn from the revolt on Talk Is Jericho. Number 10. What Vince McMahon told them in that last meeting. Whilst the revival were busy trying to turn heads in NXT, they were actually disheartened by news from some WWE staffers that Vince McMahon wouldn't really like their accents. The North Carolinian pair were repeatedly told that they wouldn't get much promo time if they ever made it onto the main roster. That actually seemed to be the case, at least until their very last meeting, with Vince McMahon. There, just as Cash and Dax were about to walk out the door, McMahon said he couldn't believe how well they spoke. We could send you out into the world to represent our company, the boss said. We could send you to Good Mon in America, he excitedly added. Both wrestlers sat across the table, scratching their heads. The revival was slightly taken aback that Vince McMahon was being so complimentary of their verbal skills when others behind the scenes had told them they were too Southern for so long. Number 9. The Original Plan For Leaving WWE Contrary to popular belief, The Revival didn't want to leave WWE on bad terms. Cash and Dax told Jericho they secretly planned to get through the hectic Christmas 2018 house show loop and then they'd ask to be released. They'd already been tipped off that they might be winning the Raw Tag Team titles shortly after the new year. So the team decided to wait until they were on an upswing in January 2019 before trying to get out. Neither man wanted it to look like they were just bitter about the lack of any TV push or title success. It was important to the revival that WWE assured them they'd take better care of the tag division as a whole, not just them. Looking back, they now realize that the promotion's attitude towards tag teams, comedy being key, for example, was never going to change. Cash even said that some might have thought they had an elevated opinion of themselves if they left when things weren't going so well. As grafters who wanted to work for the money, it was vital to see out a rough patch and then speak their mind. Number 8. Cash told WWE they didn't particularly want the titles Cash also laid out for WWE that the Revival didn't especially want to become Raw Tag Team Champions. Dax remembers those words coming out of his partner's mouth and he elaborated that Cash didn't think that the titles meant anything in January 2019 anyway. The previous year, WWE had taken a big dump all over their importance by having Braun Strowman steamroll through the bar and then win the belts with a 10-year-old kid at WrestleMania. The lack of true focus on anything but comedy depressed the revival to the point that they felt they had to make a stand. Cash told WWE their unhappiness didn't stem from a lack of personal gain. Instead, they wanted everyone in the division to get some shine and look good. D don't know, that, that's looking good apparently. The Revival were actually concerned that the state of the Raw Tag Team titles would reflect poorly on them too. They thought they'd be viewed as failures automatically because the straps weren't credible to the fans, and worried their efforts would be a waste of time. Number 7. Why Dusty Rhodes Named One of Them Dash Here's a story Cash Wheeler has never told before. Back in their NXT days, the Revival leaned on the experience and mentorship of one Dusty Rhodes as much as they could. The American Dream was put in charge of naming select talent on the brand, and he had something special in mind for Cash. He'd become Dash Wilder as a tribute to Dusty's son, Cody. Yep, Cash was Dash because of Cody's old dashing gimmick in WWE around a decade ago. Wheeler recalls hearing Rhodes say the name and smile, probably because it reminded him of his son. Though Wheeler liked that Dusty was happy, he never really took ownership of the name personally. It was just something he had to accept if he was going to be part of the WWE system. Funnily enough, everyone else now knows him as Dash, and even his own partner slipped up and called him that several times during the Talk Is Jericho podcast. Hell, Dax's young daughter even still calls Cash Dash. D Dash. Damn ahead. Number six, Dusty Rhodes called Dax the best wrestler in WWE. 
Dusty did not ignore one Scott Dawson either. He didn't give the future Dax Harwood a pet name that reminded him of his family, but he did refer to him as the best wrestler in the company backstage one day when Dax was sitting with Sami Zayn of all people. That is high praise indeed from wrestling royalty. Rhodes strolled into the trainer's room where Dax and Sami were sitting and said that he'd watched some of his matches from the previous live event loop. Then Dusty revealed he was mighty impressed and said, I don't care what anyone says around here, you're the best wrestler in the company. That is huge. Dusty's praise filled Dax full of confidence, and he knew he was onto something if he was pleasing someone with so much pedigree in the wrestling business. Sadly, several others in WWE didn't feel the same and viewed Dax and Cash as smallish tag wrestlers who shouldn't really talk. Number 5. Their Reaction to Hashtag FTR The Revolt is still a bit confused about exactly why the Young Bucks started their Hashtag FTR trend when both were working for Ring of Honor in 2017. Cash and Dax think Matt and Nick Jackson might have just been feeling the heat when fans on social media started referring to the revival as the world's best tag team. But they're not really sure. They've never actually met the Bucks face to face or asked them. Cash did say the NXT team weren't initially receptive to another duo saying F the revival. They didn't know if the Bucks had genuine animosity towards them or were just trying to be funny. Whatever the reasons were, they were never once explained to Cash or Dax via social media DM or on the phone. This part of the pod made it seem like the revival are actually AW bound. Dax said they couldn't wait to show the Bucks how to wrestle, and Cash said that it's only a matter of time before they work with the brothers one day. It sort of came across like they're already in on something and they're probably working on an angle. I hope, please. Please. Number four, Bret Hart texts Dax the day they were released. The Revival were officially released from their WWE contracts on the 10th of April 2020. That very same afternoon, the legendary Bret Hart whacked a text over to Dax Harwood to tell him how proud he was that they'd been able to stand up for what they believed in. He then asked Dax to forward the same text to Cash. Inside, Harwood was positively beaming with pride. He'd grown up idolizing the Hitman and the Revival had patterned a ton of their work after the Hart Foundation. When he saw his phone light up and that text message came through, Dax knew he'd made the right call to stand by his own self-respect and ask for his WWE release. It was vindication for turning down a contract extension that would have pocketed the pair millions. Cash agreed that earning the respect of one's peers and legends in the business is much more nourishing than accepting disrespect just to get by. And there's a lesson in life. Number three, those wacky outfit leaks were 100% legit. Shortly after the revival left WWE, some concept art, let's call it that, for a proposed new gimmick was leaked online. According to both Cash and Dax, those pictures were 100% legitimate and the exact same designs they were handed by none other than Vincent Kennedy McMahon himself during a scramble together meeting. When Cash opened up the foldout and saw what the company had planned, he could not help but burst into fits of laughter. Meanwhile, Vince, Mark Carano and Bruce Pritchard sat stoically and waited for him to stop giggling. They were not laughing. They were deadly serious about this new look. The Revival had fought for a meeting with Vince for months, but it was repeatedly delayed due to how busy the boss was with SmackDown's jump to Fox and the XFL deal. When they finally did actually get him pinned down, the pair could not believe that he effectively wanted them to become some top hat wearing clowns. Yeah, that, that wasn't gonna happen. Number two, WWE's rationale for the new look. Cash did say he would have played the new characters until his contract ran out, but he did add that he told Vince he wasn't going to sign a contract extension. Dax, meanwhile, was even less turned on by the idea of wearing lipstick, a do-rag, and carrying glow sticks to the ring. I mean, if it's good enough for DX. Even so, they can't actually understand what WWE were going for. The pair had been complaining on screen for months about being taken seriously, and it even said something like, if you want us to be clowns, then we'll be clowns. Big mistake. That one promo, one design to disparage WWE's ha-ha approach to tag wrestling stirred something in Vince McMahon. His vision for the new look was that the revival would be dressing that way out of spite. Their frosty response to the pitch changed everything. That meeting took place on Friday before an episode of SmackDown and the Revival were informed that WWE were pulling them from the road the very next Wednesday. Apparently Vince didn't like that they laughed at his idea. He's got feelings too. 
Number 1. WWE's final offer was higher than reported Reports online suggested for a good 15 months or so that the revival would earn somewhere in the region of around $700,000 to $750,000 per year each if they agreed to a WWE extension. Get this. Cash and Dax told Chris Jericho that those numbers were the lowest estimate. WWE apparently offered much higher salaries to keep them. Though the pair didn't exactly give away concrete numbers, they did hint that it was much closer to the $1 million mark per annum. If they were willing to do the comedy stuff and repackage themselves with McMahon's new vision, then Cash and Dax would have raked it in working light-hearted matches for the next couple of years. The thing is though, they'd already made up their minds about leaving. When Dax asked his grandmother for some advice, she said it's an awful lot of money to turn down. Then she paused and said, but how much money do you really need? That confirmed to Harwood that he was making the right call and now the revolt are set to seriously shake up whichever company they land in next. And that's our list. Did we miss anything out? Let us know about anything else that you learned from the revolt's talk is Jericho appearance and do not forget to like, share, click on that subscribe button and ring the bell while you're there. Also, be sure to head on over to whatculture.com and click on some more brilliant articles just like the one this video is based on. I have been Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Thank you very much for clicking on this brilliant video today, and I'm sure I'll see you very, very soon.